first responder certifications, which opens up opportunities. But it essentially, it puts Ely in the center of making people's lives better and giving them career development choices. We're not the first ones to think about this. There's a school in Colorado that is working right now to develop a program like this. There's also a school in Bentonville, Arkansas, which is now the, the destination for mountain biking in the world. Uh, Walmart money is behind them. So you know when you've got these other places that are already established as destinations working towards this training program, we've got letters of support from trail crews in Utah, in California, throughout Nevada that are saying if there were graduates of this program, we would hire them right now at $20 an hour and we would still need more people. And so with Great Basin College focusing, uh, and I think properly in workforce development, this would be another one of those workforce development programs that would bring people to Ely, use our mountains as a classroom, and essentially put us in the center of their lives in, you know, being a, being significant to these trail building projects throughout the West. And so we've got letters of support from uh, all different organizations, this is the Shoshone Tribe, um, and we're pretty much asking for the City of Ely to write a letter of support to the EDA, uh, which is who we're applying for this grant from, uh, to help us plan and develop this course, um, to convince them to go ahead and approve that. I'll entertain a motion on the second. So approved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Very good. So, as always, thank you all for your support. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, item 5, Councilman Allworth discussion for possible action, six-month performance evaluation of the City Fire Chief Matt Stewart, including but not limited to consideration of character, alleged misconduct, professional competence, or physical or mental health. Possible actions include, uh, but is not limited to, termination, suspension, demotion, rejection, Pay, reduction in pay, reprimand, promotion, endorsement, engagement, retention, or no action. I believe the attorney has a statement here on that. Yes, and I got some questions regarding whether it should be open or closed um, as far as the meeting. And so section 8.03 of the Open Meeting Law Manual indicates when closed sessions may not be held, and it's for these exact situations. So this is a six-month review, and uh, it, it is for an appointed public officer. And so in discussing his um, ability to serve as an appointed public officer, those are held open. But if we were to get any, anything outside of his job description, then it would be closed. So we'll keep this within the, the job description of his um, service as an appointed official. And that's why it's during the open meeting. You're on the other side of the picket line now, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> okay. hey, I, I, since I uh, get the author of this right here, first of all, I can make a disclosure that I'm a past 36-year member of the Ely Volunteer Fire Department. I went in active in November of 2019, and I probably went on hundreds of calls with that, hundreds of them. And I still am a licensed EMT for the state of Nevada, so I think I can do this here with, with, in, with no bias, one way or the other, you know. So if I could start off, just give a little preliminary why we're Can I jump in there too, Jim, and cut you off? I'd like to disclose to you that uh, Pat Stark's a great friend of mine for the last 20 years, but this doesn't have an effect on my decision. Okay, this is the first time we've ever had this with the fire chief. And it goes back to June of 19 when, we, when the mayor made a very good notice that we never even had a job description for a fire chief. The volunteers basically hired the fire chief for the city for over 100 and some years. So anyway, that started this process. The job description was wrote. Uh, we had a group input in on the deal. And then uh, the fire chief at that time became ill, patented in, and filled that position for four and a half months. So then in, uh, in August 13th, we had the interview for Pat, discussion and so forth. And but right prior right before that, I think it was in July, we had a list of questions. It was a uh, closed session for the operation of the fire department and the volunteers, which was well attended. Trying to get to make sure because it's again we went into new waters of having a different a job description for the fire chief. So the mayor during that back in August 13, you know, he asked several questions. You know, how was Pat feeling about making policies and procedures? He said he's already started to do the policies and the revisions. 
you know, and the, the mayor asked, plans on working and supporting the volunteer fire department. Perhaps he's working on scheduling every week. And that was that time to the end of September and so forth. But, and we went to, the, there's a whole gamut of items we wanted Pat to come back and be mentioned to him. In six months, come back, which is my fault, it should happen in February. So we're off two weeks. And, you know, do an evaluation of what we were asking him of his new job description. So that's what this evaluation is. You know, the wording on that makes it like, oh my God, you know, the guy's going to get thrown into the sharks, you know. So that's, and a lot of people, I've received several calls, you know, I said, you got to understand the, the law. So that's what this was about. So, you know, I, I, I've got a few comments to, to make on this right here, and I, I welcome other comments too, you know. So since I've got the mic yet, I'll start. <laughs> you know, uh, when we offered Pat, the pay range was 55 to 85. We offered him 80,000 to start with, you know, and, and he agreed with that right there. With a six month review of what we're doing right here, the mayor asked if that sounded okay, Pat said yes. So the review is, you know, some of the things I wanted to follow up on was the EMS building. And it's good. I've, I've checked with the treasurer, the Sharp Building Company. Unfortunately, it's still 30 Five percent of what we usually get back, but there's a lot of money. We went into another area on billing was a motor vehicle accident. I talked with Pat. I think you can elaborate a little more on that because it was your reports and you did splash on that for a second. That's a lot of money. So basically, what happened when we did the motor vehicle accident billings? Um, the billing company had some confusion with the way things were done, and we have since got back with the billing company and. I had kept kind of Jim in the loop of what was going on with uh, the conversation with them. And we've just had the billing company go back and resubmit all of these claims. Um, also during this transition, we had a backlog of payments that needed to go to the collections company. So um, here just in the last month, we turned approximately $66,000 over to the collections company. So hopefully we can start recouping some of that. Um, I do have some information I need to get with the attorney on. Uh, the billing company did tell us one of the things we should do is add in our language when people sign on the um, bottom of the tablet that shows all the services that we're doing that should they not pay the bill and they do end up in collections that there's a 30% fee added onto their bill which basically is what the billing, the collections company charges so we can recoup some of our revenue if we do. So um, all of that's been working pretty smooth. Hoping to get some feedback in the near future. They've just, uh, in the last two weeks, resubmitted all this billing and trying to go back into all these auto accidents. During Pat's term here, also, we've uh, started the new, due to the contract with the county, an EMS program, and I believe we now have our first female firefighter MT in the city. That was another milestone, which is working out well. And like I said earlier, you know, we get people wanting to apply for these jobs before we couldn't get nothing, you know. But right at the head of my, on my notes I made on August 13th was a big I just outline. Volunteers need to become more active in the department. Everybody knows, uh, for example, there's only, throughout the career guys, there's 19 volunteers. We have allowed 45. Back in our era, you had a waiting list. Volunteerism is down. I know the fire chief, the paid staff are doing their best, trying to lift the spirit up, whatever. I really think the volunteers they need to take a lead in this. Yeah, we've had discussions on this. Um, we actually did just get another new member here two weeks ago. Um, one of the uh, gentlemen that works at the mine from Poland that was on the mine rescue and stuff over there has joined up. He's been active in participating in the training. So they've been reaching out. We've been reaching out. It's just like I said, volunteerism is down. I mean, everywhere you look at, you know. Back in the day, you had the JC, you had all of those organizations that were super strong, and it's just people just, I don't know, it's just, it's nationwide, it's a problem, you know, and we're still still working. Thank God all the people that we do got are, you know, pretty active, and so we got good turnout. Um, but, you know, there's some of the guys that are, you know, getting older too, so we need that new younger blood to replace them. I think that's a task, you know, he took on, but I still think. You know, you need to promote the, the president of the volunteers to keep reaching out. I mean, we got 
A lot of mines are out here have mine rescue teams. Those guys are trained, they want to come in, of course, they work the different shifts. But from what I'm hearing, all the calls, you've had some real grinders, big fires. Again, if that had been for the fire, our fire department, it, would, it could have been real ugly. But I have to also comment, I don't think you missed a call. Not many. You know, at all, taking on this, this, this new role, I mean, which is really important. And so I, I just, want, I got only one other thing that to comment on is, and I'll turn it over to the other people, is what do you feel is the, is the long-term forecast for our volunteer fire department? I look, we got now eight career people. They're going on a lot of calls. We have, I think there's probably only three travels still. The rest of them are in town. And again, you know, Elko, City of Elko is way bigger than Ely, but they went from Lee Engine Company, like our volunteer fire department, to a career staff. The Lee Engine Company gets called now for a dumpster fire or a brush fire. I really want to make sure our volunteer fire department can stay strong and not be, and I don't say this in a mean way, overrun by the career staff. No. We need the volunteers, but again, the volunteers themselves have to help themselves. They can't rely on your staff right. with the training. I mean, we've said the guys got to do the training. You mentioned it's going to be a weekly posted training. But again, I know you, know, you said you have seven trainings during a month. Trust me, I know the trainings don't get well attended. It's hard, so I, I'm asking. It's getting more. better. I did uh, I did this just last week, sent a schedule to Chief North because I don't think all of the information is getting out of the department. So we do have a training schedule put together from now all the way through the end of June through the first part of July, actually the last week of June. And so I typed that up on an actual letter. I sent it to Brett. I said, you need to make sure this is getting uh, distributed to the other departments and see if you can page it out on our thing. So they did do that the other day. Uh, we're getting more attendance from Lackawanna. Um, our attendance is, is just back and forth. You know, it just depends. You know, I'm hoping when the weather gets warmer and we do a lot more outdoor stuff, we'll get better attendance, you know. That's all I have. Welcome anybody else. I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> Actually, uh, I've really been impressed with, with Pat. You know, before we, we, we hired you, I went and talked to a lot of volunteers and I asked them one question because you were right for hundred and something years. The volunteers basically brought their, their guard, their fire chief. Candidate to the city and that school became a fire chief. Uh, I know it because that was one of my dad's for a long time a fire chief here. But Pat, when I talked to several of your volunteers, every one of them gave you the best review you can imagine. That took all of the doubt off of my and off of my mind about you know this stuff that you probably the wrong not going to talk about. But what I can also say is that I've been out to the department a few times. I've been totally impressed with the job you've done. I mean, I like your report. You know, like the new truck, hallelujah. You know, I didn't like the fact you were running around in your own personal vehicle at 2 o'clock in the morning to go try to find something when you're with the fire team. So I'm very pleased with this. And, you know, that's all I want to say. Thank you for a great job. I love your report. You know, and the little naysayers in your department that I can know of. So. Thanks. Yeah, I'd just like to say you're doing a great job, and, and thanks for uh, moving the department in a positive direction. Well, all i got to say is I watched it yesterday at the city center, so you were doing quite a job there. <laughs> 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 I'm glad I support you all the way. <laughs> I hope he wasn't eating. <laughs> he wasn't eating, eating was he? <laughs> Two calls are back to back with one of about um, with lunch going on. <laughs> Yeah, cult cultural change in a department is a hard thing, and I, I know you've kind of tackled it head on, and it's, it's going to take some while to you, but we appreciate the effort, and uh, I think the council is well pleased with the results so far, so anything else? Anything you'd like to add? I mean, I get a raise? Huh. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Well, I can report on the financial side of Pat, the Ed, that he's very, very conscious of his budget, and he has been doing an excellent job at that, staying within the budget that got cut last year, so I'll give him big kudos on that. Well, just doing this evaluation again, I probably have to ask the counselor, the last 
than no action or no action. So, could, can we make a, uh, you know, it sounds like from the consensus of the council, he's doing a great job because the evaluation that was supposed to be done in six months was to evaluate his performance that, that we asked him to do. So, if that's, uh, you know, if we wanted to entertain a pay increase based on his first six month uh, evaluation, is that now or we do bring it, bring it up at another time? That can be done now. And so language, uh, uh, it sounds like it went well, the language makes it look like it was going to be a, a rough evening. Uh, but this is pulled directly from the open meeting uh, manual. Uh, I don't love the language. Jennifer and I talked a lot about it. It's just the language we have to use. But what it does, it gives almost unlimited options. Yeah, it gives many options. So promotion is included in there, and I would read that as um, allowing a raise. And so it is on a discussion for possible action. And that last sentence says, no action you could take, no action on it. So it really gives broad discretion on what action or non-action is taken tonight. Okay, I'd, I'd like to uh, throw out there the uh, approval of his performance was satisfactory. And at this time, we get I don't know, uh, Michelle's liaison for the fire department, but we need to consider an uh, increase for his performance. It appears to keep going with further reviews as the increase to work with the financial aid, I'm not going to tell her we X amount of money, but I think that an increase is warranted. And, uh, you know, there's still a range of $5,000 where he is from $80,000 to eighty-five. So I don't know how the budget actually works all that much. So I'd, I'd like to consider a raise for him, but bring it up at the next meeting. Mr. Cope, you're putting out. I'm sorry? Putting out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for the per uh, percentage amount. What, was that a motion? No, yeah, that's a motion. <laughs> that was a motion. To Do we have a second to that? The, the next agenda to consider percentage raise okay. after consulting with the finance lady. Based on this, no doubt. Okay. Excellent review. There's not a lot of room there to, uh, percentage wise, to work up the ladder. You're only talking about $5,000 on the table there, really. I mean, even if they were considering just what we were talking about uh, in general, a 3% raise to make sure that we're still just moving people along, I don't think would be out of order. I, 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 I think a raise is warranted. I feel like the motivation to get your money is a motivator. There's no doubt about sure. it. Hmm. And, I, and I was actually disappointed there wasn't some of your staff here to back me up. I expected <laughs> Donnie Brook. You know, because of that. <laughs> so the pleasure of the, I, I, I really believe there's an, an increase is warranted, but again, I think we need to run through the finance lead on what we can absorb. So we have a motion for a satisfactory report to be filed, and then okay, a recommendation sure. for a raise amount to be determined at the next meeting. Yeah, maybe the finance lead can come up and just ask a question. Right. Simple math. Okay, so eight times three, three percent for twenty-four hundred. That's pretty hard. How does your budget work for that? <laughs> five, you know, about four thousand. It's not a large amount. I think it's something that we work with. Yes. Okay. So, so would you like to amend your motion? How much you'd like to have? I'll make the I'll amend the motion to go to the full five thousand dollars to the, up to the maximum eighty-five. Okay. Uh, is that acceptable, Madam Chair? Yeah. We have a motion. Do we have a second? With the fact you still might get another review. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and an annual review is actually in the code now, is that right? Yes. Okay. So doing this annually for all of our elected or appointed city officials. Elected officials get reviewed every four years. You get reviewed every year. So, okay. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. A second from Councilman Spear. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you, Ed. And like I said, I've got an open door policy. If anybody's got any questions, uh, the mayor's attended um, some of my staff meetings. I've been holding off on this next one until we hopefully get the other member hired. And said we've done several policies that are in place. And they want to stop by to look at those or whatever. 
You're always in a meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Um, I will turn the gavel over to Mayor Pro Pro Tam Alworth for this next item six. Okay, uh, for the approval of the Third Amendment to Development Agreement between the City of Ely and the Matter Northern Railway Foundation Incorporated, extending the term of the agreement to October 1st, 2021. Move to approve. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Bill passed. Turn it back to the mayor. Okay. Item 7, Council Member City Treasurer Trask. Discussion for possible action review of proposals received for certified public accounting services to complete the City of Ely's fiscal year 2021, 2022, and 2023 audits with possible acceptance of a proposal. Proposals under consideration are Hintonburg CPAs and Advisors and Teddington and Christensen LLC. Well, I can because I worked with both entities as so they're very professional and they both would do a good job. So I guess it comes down to money, which would be um, $10, with Kennington, correct. And they are the ones that we have been, uh, have done the audit for the last, I want to say, five, six years. I'd like to have a statement to put it in. I was moved to that we hire a because it's a ten thousand dollar net debtor. And after, you, if you look, uh, you know, nineteen thousand two hundred eighty-five against is twenty-eight thousand, but then this increases constantly going up. So I don't know, but anyway, I'd like to recommend that we hire the uh, firm of Kennington, Gary Kennington, as partner with this. What is the name of their company? Kennington and Christensen. And Christensen right. So we have a motion from Councilman Spear for the acceptance of the proposal from Kennington and Christensen. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Councilman Plungus. Uh, Any further discussion? I did, Madam Treasurer. Since you deal with the entities, have you dealt with KNC? Yes. Yeah. They, like I said, the last two years, well, I've gone through two since I've been back in the last go round, and they're, they're both competent and they've uh, both entities, and they're great to work with either one of them. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further comments or discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Okay. Item 8 Council Members, City Fire Chief Stork. Uh, discussion for possible action approval of cooperative fire protection agreement between the City of Ely Fire Department and the USDI Bureau of Land Management Ely District. Um, you get a copy of the contract. This is pretty standard of what they do. Um, we, we do these contracts for five years at a time. Some of their pricing has changed a little bit, but this is all set by federal federal rate and what they pay and stuff. Um, Mutual aid agreement with us, first 24 hours is free, so we do the initial attack with them on fires. If we do that, get called back later to say, take an engine out and help again the following day or something, we can bill for that and get reimbursed. So it's pretty much a standard contract that we've had in place before that we didn't renew every five years. Did the secretary be actually billed at your actual costs? You can try to negotiate that with them, but most of their rates are kind of built in at the federal pay scale, as you see in the contract that they have set up. If you have actual... Okay, what it says on your bill, bill rates will be actual costs that may differ from the rates quoted in this document, which means right. I think you can bill like your hourly rate instead of this 25 bucks. Right, for, for like certain people you can, and like they go through and they'll, and they get the, you know, typical thing, they'll try to negotiate with you, so. We haven't really ran into that um, with them because we try to try to basically just do that initial attack with them and help out, and then when they get their resources on scene, we come back and do our main job, which is you know protect the city. So um, they got a lot of federal firefighters that do this stuff out in the wildland. So um, we don't go do a lot of that. There is money to be made at it, and 
is something I've talked to Jeanette about possibly pursuing in the future. Of, you know, we can generate enough revenue on the guys who are on the off shift to pay them overtime to go say run the engine if it's in our district and, and be able to make some revenue at it. But on the same hand, I do not want to deplete our resources of uh, protecting the city, which is our main interest. Any other questions on this item? I would move to approve this item. Motion to approve from Councilman Spear. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second from Councilman Carson. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Item 8, Council Members, uh, City Fire Chief, Stork discussion for possible action. Approval of Cooperative Fire Protection Agreement between the City of Ely Fire Department and the... Did I just do that one? I did. Yeah. Moving on to item 9. Oh my gosh, we're selling some tires. City Council Members, Fire, City Fire Chief, Stork discussion for possible action. Approval for City Fire Chief to seek individuals who may be interested in purchasing engine sevens, eight tires and rims previously advertised. So, so, so the way that's worded, we, you can go ask somebody? Well, that's kind of what I think. We've already advertised this in the paper. It's actually went out and nobody bid on it. I just don't think a whole lot of people that might use this read the newspaper and read those advertising. So I encourage any of you guys, if you know anybody that might be able to use them types of tires, um, you know, a lot of the ranchers have older water trucks. They're the old 1020 tires. They're going away from those. But I know there's several of the probably ranchers in the community that would probably be able to use them, and I'd rather be able to get a little bit of money out of them rather than just haul them off to the landfill. So. And this gives you the latitude to just work a price and get rid of Well, them. I would definitely probably bring the price back before the board, but at least try and go find some interesting people that might want to buy them. Yeah. And so you can bring bring back the take your office. direction on that. Yeah, so he would, he would be able to, so right now we put it out, bid it, I mean the next step would potentially be just to trash them. Um, and so this is just seeking out individuals, I guess requests for proposals, and go out and say, would you be interested, specifically would you be interested, and then he would bring that back, and the decision would be with you to, who to sell them to, and it would be the highest bidder. Okay. What, 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 as previously advertised, 200 bucks for all eight tires and wheels. If you have somebody come in and throw down two Franklins, you'll be happy with that? Is that well, they could come in with a proposal for anything. If he can't find anybody and someone says, hey, look, I'll come and pick them up and haul them off for you, or I'll give you 10 bucks a tie, or I don't know. I, we would have to, you yeah, guys would have to decide. Yeah, yeah, you guys would have to decide. Legal end of how to do that. So, so yeah, basically, he's asking if we can <coughs> seek proposals. Okay. I'll entertain a motion on this. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Don't be shy. All right. I'm going to assume that's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Item 10, Council Member City Attorney Manuel, discussion only review of research findings in connection with previous City Council action to draft ordinances making the Tree Board and Animal Control Advisory Board clerk appointed committees. So I was asked to, uh, it was a couple Council meetings ago, to review the potential of making the tree board and the, and the animal control advisory board, pulling them out of the open meeting law requirements. The concern was the expense associated with it, the lack of staff to be able to comply with the rigorous open meeting law requirements. And so as I researched that, the potential of making them clerk appointed committees, I started with the ordinances that created them. And they were created and specifically um, organized to operate under open meeting law. And I think it is appropriate, my recommendation would be that they continue to work under open meeting law. And that's because they would be public bodies. Um, they expend or disperse taxpayer revenues, or they, they advise us or give recommendations to our board on the expending or disbursement of taxpayer revenue. So I think it's important that they stay under the open meeting law. There would be other potential options. Um, as long as they are functioning under the city, the open meeting law requires that if they were to have individuals of that organization seek out to um, become a nonprofit or um, another type of group that handles the tree board or animal control issues. I know other areas have nonprofit um, shelters that deal with all the animal control issues and contract with the city. But that's something that they could look into if the open meeting law requirements are too rigorous. But my recommendation would be that they not be. Um, there be no ordinance draft changes. I do think they need to function under open law if they're functioning 
in their current capacity. Okay? Anything else or questions or discussion from the board on this? It says it all does. I think it does. With that, we'll move on to item 11, public comment. Please state your name for the record and you will have three minutes.